Hello children. Do you know whatever the activities in our daily life there is a science in it. To explain you about such things I came today with a useful topic that is separation of substances. Let us see the learning contains are methods of separation, advantages of separation of substances, separation using more than one method, separation of solids and liquids and solutions and solubility. So why do we separate substances? There are different reasons. Generally we observe separation of substances in the activities of people around us. For example when your mom gives tea to your father, what does she do before giving tea? She separates tea leaves from the liquid with a strainer. In the same way, butter is also taken by churning milk or curd. Before cooking rice, your mom separates stones from the rice too. All these processes are called separation of substances. Now, why do we need separate substances? There are different reasons to separate substances. First one, we separate two different but useful components. Both of them can be used, for example, two different types of fruits in the basket. Whatever we like, we can choose it and we can separate. We separate them based on the requirement. We remove impurities or harmful components. Best example is separation of stones from the rice. Now let us see methods of separation. Hand picking, threshing, winnowing. Sieving, filtration, sedimentation, decantation, evaporation and condensation. Let us see the first method of separation is, is about hand picking. In this method we separate slightly larger sized impurities like the pieces of dirt, stone and herb uh, from the wheat, rice or pulses. Now, Second method is about threshing. Second one, threshing. Generally, our farmers use this method to separate wheat or paddy from the bundles of stalks. In this process, the stalks are beaten to free the grain seeds. Sometimes, threshing is done with the help of the bullocks. Machines are also used to thresh larger quantities of grains. Now the third method is winnowing. This method is used to separate heavier and lighter components by using wind or air. If you go to a field after the harvesting, you can observe the farmers taking the seeds and dust particles into a plate-like structure and stand on raised platform and tilt it slightly so that the mixture moves out slowly. When it moves out, the air blows the lighter particles and the heavier particles remain there. Now, let us see the next slide is about sieving. What does your mother do before preparing some sweet with the flour? She uses sieve to separate impurities or unwanted things. When she sieves, the bigger particles remain in the sieve. This process is called sieving. We can also use this process in the construction sites to separate pebbles and stones from the sand. So when we can't separate the particles by using these three methods, we can separate by the process called sedimentation, decantation, filtration. Now what is sedimentation? So let us see about the sedimentation. When we add water to two different components, one is heavier and the other is slightly the heavier component. First, the heavier component settles down. So the vessel and the light one can be removed by removing the water as it mixes with the water. This process is called sedimentation and the decantation. Settling of the component is sedimentation and removing lighter components along with the water 
is called decantation. Now we can see the picture of decantation. Here the supernatant is pouring in no iron to another beaker. We can use decantation and filtration to separate tea leaves. Now let us see about the filtration process. Filtration means using strainer to separate the leaves from the tea. Filtration method is the best to separate tea from the leaves. So one more example to filtration is about fruit and veggies juices are usually filtered before drinking to separate seeds and pulp okay by using this filtration process. Now we will move to evaporation process. So do you know children everyone watch this evaporation process everyone see uh, at home while uh, going to bath mom actually keep hot water. The process of changing water into vapor by using heat to separate it from the other component is called evaporation. For example, sea water contains a lot of salts and minerals. In order to make salt, salt water can be heated, then the water evaporates and salts remain. Okay, how uh, water can be heated? So, by the help of the sun, so they will take the help and they allow them to evaporate. Finally, they will collect the salt. Now, condensation process. The process of changing water vapor into the liquid form is called condensation. My dear students, you might have observed when your mom cooks, the all steam comes out. So, when you open the particular lid, the lid inner, inner side, you can see a lot of droplets. So, how the droplets are formed? So, if once evaporating, during evaporation process, the particles of the water molecules moves upwards. When it touches to the cool breeze, then those evaporated molecules condenses into droplets of course you know very well how come the rain actually uh, fall on the ground is in the same process i hope you have understood the concept and i hope it will be useful for you thank you have a great time